WNOV 860 and W293CX 106.5 Milwaukee. All right, good morning. Welcome to Community Voice. I'm your host, Keith Paris. I want to thank everybody for joining us this morning. Hello, stranger. Well, howdy. What's happening? I was getting a little sensitive. I thought I thought I thought I thought you didn't want to be on the team anymore. And so my feelings, oh, my feelings was hurt. Be, could be. What up, Carvey? We all good. Yo. What's happening? You gotta y'all? get Carvey a mic. Yeah, we got I stretched it over there. They keep putting it back. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh four one four 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 five two five zero. Four one four 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 five two five zero. We sir. talked to him enough. I mean he should Ooh, have that him yeah. all the time. I'm like, why y'all doing that? Start getting some speaking parts, man. Well he already got him. He look God is the authority on that. I'm gonna tell you. People don't be under, people don't understand the authority of God. They think they're in control most of the time. <laughs> he uses us as tools, right, Pastor? Mm-hmm. Pastor? Oh, Y'all know the song. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's been cracking though, man? Hey, man, I'm just trying to make it happen, Captain. Uh, no, it's, it's all good. I did get out. I did see the eclipse yesterday. Um, <laughs> yes, of course. You must. Man. You must. Yeah. It's impossible. It's, man, you, do, you know, you can look up once the people who were doing like the full, once it was fully eclipsed. Yeah. Then you could take off your protective glasses and use, but as it's moving over and just to watch it kind of move is really amazing. So look at look at nature. I know somebody. Someone, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene was saying that <clears throat> these are signs from God that the world is coming to an end, and she said that look, they had an earthquake and they had the eclipse, and I'm going, wait a minute. Then they find out that the earthquake that happened in New Jersey out east was centered right under Trump's golf course. Now, is that God or what? No, it's plate tectonics. There you go. So now it's science, right? <laughs> it was Before coming. that, she was going, but you do know it was right under Trump's property, right? Mm-hmm. That that was kind of the epicenter of that little earthquake yeah. that they had out yeah, there. I think that fault line was there for hundreds of years. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, look, look at that. And, you know? and, and because of all that oil they pulled up for your automobiles and your Oh, yeah, that's, that's jelly. the problem out in Oklahoma. Yeah, all that's, that fracking yeah. that's causing these earthquakes. Now, that's that's man-made, folks. Mm-hmm. It, that's nature uh, adjusting herself because nature will always try to adjust herself in spite of what we do. Uh, in terms of polluting the uh, planet and everything. So now someone asked me, did some people think it was the end of the world? Uh, It's the end of the world as we know it. As we know it. And I'm doing fine. I love that song. Have you watched Young I mean, let me me go back. Don't let me pull you off. Because I'll go into Young Sheldon. (laughs) It's the end of the world as we know it. 
and I'm doing fine. Uh, yeah, so it, it's really amazing. And look, let us just take our hats off to where we are in terms of our scientific understanding of how nature works. Uh, you know, back in the day when people would see eclipse, they they thought literally uh, the world was coming to an end. Uh, but this happens. It's just one of those phenomena where the moon and the sun lines up. I've used the word perfectly. They line up, and so basically, for it's an opt it's an optical illusion. Obviously, I think Michelle said that the sun is four hundred times the size of the moon, and so it's an optical illusion. Obviously, the moon is not bigger than the sun. Here's the other piece. There's a lot of people. The Earth revolves around the sun, not the sun around the Earth. I'll say it for you again. The earth revolves around the sun. And the moon revolves around, around earth. the earth, right. Yeah, and point, you got all these things, man. It's mm -hmm. just the gravitational pull, like, you know, um, Kiana and I are, uh, we're, we're cancers. Mm -hmm. And so we're lunar children. And, you know, it's amazing how the moon affects tides. Uh, there are people who are in, um, who work with mental health will tell you it affects people's mental health. So we're all kind of connected in this existence, right? And uh, so it was really amazing. So hopefully you got a chance to get out and see it yesterday. Um, the next time I think it's going to happen is like 21 years in terms of uh, when when the U.S. will have another full eclipse. It may or may not do the same route that it did before. It depends on the time of the year, obviously, the position of the sun. I, I think this is like my third or fourth yeah. eclipse I've seen in you my have, life. Five, they're, maybe. They're having them all over the world. The question oh, yeah. is, when you have it here, based on the positioning of the moon and the sun and the earth, and it lines up. And so it's all part of that 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 rotation. I wanted to tell Carvey, I looked at one once, and I saw it for two days. <laughs> <laughs> it was ingrained in my pupils. I'm telling you, just like don't do it. <laughs> Get you some so be blind. I was trying my dad, my darkness to look up at that thing, man. and when I opened my eyes, it was still there when I closed them. Yeah, I'm just saying, man, it's just like uh, yeah. I went to a Parliament Funkadelic concert, and I couldn't hear for four days. Literally, I sat too close. Yeah, I sat too close. Oh when you God. talk about Parliament Funkadelic, I was I was blessed to to be at the stage on Fond du Lac. Okay. Uh, Bernie Worrell. Okay. Uh, Billy Dickens. Okay. And some other folks was playing, and I was close enough to Bernie where I didn't couldn't talk for a week and a half. I worked here. I don't even know if I heard uh, because Bootsy was traveling with him. Right. I don't even know if I heard Bootsy because Basically. at this point, <laughs> and I'm going, oh man, we got we got great seats, second row. Wrong. No, 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 wrong. No, 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 no. And let me say something, brother. And, I, and this is an issue with my family, so I'm, I'm just doing full transparency here, all right? I don't know if you take your woman on a date to a funk concert. I, 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 it all depends what the outcome is supposed and, to be. And, but this, but this, this dude, they were all hugged up like they were at a, um, a Luther Vandross concert. And I'm trying to explain to them, dude, this is Parliament, man. We're getting ready to party for the next eight hours. Because, oh. you know, they, they go forever. And a day. And a day. And, and to the point that management in the theater has to say we got to shut the lights off. You know, it's getting close to midnight. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's a romantic date. Wait, where are we going tonight? Oh, baby, I'm going to take you over here to uh, I mean, it depends. What's, Parliament. It depends on, I mean, what's romantic? I mean, because there's romantic, you know, there's... You know what romantic. You know what I'm talking about. And then about. there's romantic uh, freaky diggy. You know that's that, a parliament yeah. funkadelic. Uh, no, yeah, I mean okay. the brides of Funkenstein. Some of them have tails when they're on stage. <laughs> Fur and tails. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just saying, uh, and and you know, it's always a conflict. You know, even you know, because for me, I go to the concert for the music. That's why I'm there, and I'm probably not going to pay a lot of attention to you. Because I just paid one hundred and fifty dollars to see Keon on stage, so Keon is gonna have my full attention because he just got a buck fifty. Okay, caller, welcome to the program. 
Oh, hey, oh, uh, oh, oh, this hey. is a, oh, that was Jay's Brown concert. Okay. okay, I thought we had a painful memory for you, Tyrone, but that was Jay's Brown at County Stadium. All right, we got you. Uh, uh, <laughs> but I can tell you that, man, I remember we, I, no, I took me and my wife went to see the Funkadelic at the PA, PAC Funk Center, and they come climbing over the seats, coming to the stage, <laughs> freaked everybody out. So, no, nah, that was a couple's thing. But then when I was in college, they came to UWM, and, man, you right, we partied. They, they, lit, up, they lit up the cigarettes out in the audience. They came out on their break and smoked with us. That dude was walking around with that guy. Cigarettes? Cigarettes? <laughs> cigarettes? <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. I'm sorry. And the left-handed cigarettes. cigarettes. Because that, that's not they what the big old monument had in his mouth. Right, right. <laughs> they had the illegal cigarettes. Oh, okay. Well, and, All right. And we, and it was a rolled-up substance. We partied, bro. We had our own wine. I think the UWM security guards back then, they were too scared to come out and tell us we couldn't do it. And so I remember, I see, I seen him in both environments, both that one and the crazier one when you're single and you're just out having a great time. So yeah, I, that that's I mean that type of show again. Luther Vandross, uh, uh, Will Downey. Okay, yeah, you you and your lady go to that, you know, because that 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 is that's a baby making music. I don't even, know, man. With, even with, James Brown, man, we saw James Brown. Man, half the audience was trying to do the James Brown. Right, you right. You, it's a different interaction. <laughs> you ain't just laying back, man. It's a different interaction. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not saying now. Hopefully, she's in the parliament like you. If she's in the parliament like you. Y'all gonna party, but yeah, I mean, I I just I wouldn't. I would suggest that. Let's just key. I don't know. Hey, but if you know, I saw. I mean, just to show you the the, the difference, we saw the first time I saw Prince, Tony Braxton open for him. Now that was so you had this elegance. Right at the be as the opening act at the I think it was at the the, the, the arena. Okay. And then comes out Prince and tear it all down. <laughs> so it was like seeing those two uh, two opposites in the same show was really amazing. Like, and that's you. a re- that's a regret that I never got a chance to see Prince live. I, I would have loved to have been at a Prince concert uh, just because he's Prince. Yeah, it was just. But I remember those are memorable, memorable, and then all of the stuff at Summerfest before they turned on us and they stopped. You know, in the beginning of the Summerfest, people don't; those that are not old enough know that the, every every night was almost R and B act <laughs> or some major act. Saw so all kind of people: Isaac Hayes and uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Jackson I mean, everybody Five. came to one of yeah, my they, favorites. Nineteen eighty four. I went to see Al Jarreau. Main stage, great show. Oh my god, it was uh Daz Band. Uh man. And, and 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 I did have the good fortune though to see James Brown live. And if you never man, you talk about the hardest working man in show business. He was the hardest working He's man. Hardest working. I, I you know, when we interviewed him in 1974, you know, it's on YouTube, it's the lost tapes of James Brown. When I interviewed him, he was just uh, man, that dude was as deep. Just having a conversation with him than it was when we saw him at that did night. You have, did you, was his translator with him? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand. But you know, no, no. Is it too soon? Is it too soon? We actually, <laughs> we, actually, we actually filmed him getting off his jet. You know, at that time, he still had his own private jet. And he got off the jet. The dude brought his suits and stuff in, and we sat out and had this interview. But man, that was the deepest interview I ever had with any star. He was he was something else. So yeah, man, he could he but he inspired me because that was uh that was the bomb to actually sit down and have a conversation with him. I wasn't supposed to do the interview. Mm-hmm. My buddy was supposed to do it, but then in the end he said, No, I ain't do it. And I did it. And so but he was uh he was uh, he was he had such a profound uh what would you call it, uh he had impacts on on the black life yeah. in America. Yeah. You know, he he brought pride to us. He could bring the funk to you. It was it was everything you could think of. And then he could give you some controversial stuff. You know, his man is man's world or or the, uh, King Heroin. All of the things he did, which were were some cases were overwhelming because he was talking about the issues in our community. But wasn't rap. It was just straight out 
commentary and song. Yeah, I think you know. I think he it, it, there is um, George Duke uh, when he uh, the late George Duke he would do a whole salute to funk, and there were people that he identified as the what he just thought were the forefathers of funk, and of course it started with James Brown, then he moved to George Clinton. And then, of course, then uh, he was able to do that's because he he had one of the great bass lines, you know, when you hear on Dookie Sticks. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 James Brown, it it, it is, um, and, you know, like human beings, um, it, it's really amazing because our backstories um, are are really really amazing. Did you see the movie uh, with um, what's his name, Chadwick? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah, and I, you know, and some things, of course, were revealed in the movie that I don't think many of us knew, especially well, okay. some of the stuff here, he here, did here, with women, the brutality of women. Right. So that was nobody know. I you never would have known that in real life. Who uh, played? But, who played he, his mama in that biopic? I don't know. I know Jill Scott was one of his uh, oh, okay. wives and oh, somebody man. else. Oh, and man. and I, I, but I can't. And, you know, he was. He was as brutal Viola as Davis. Ike Turner was. Viola Davis. Yeah. yeah, so oh, when she finally came to see him. Yeah, at the, at the Apollo. And you yeah. know what she did with what, what Viola Davis does? She cried. Oh, oh she, can, she can cry. That well, woman she can, can she cry. She must can have an instant cry when you think you know Dude. could you make you be crying. <laughs> she, got, she got nominated for an Academy Award for only being in a movie about seven minutes, the movie Doubt, with Meryl Streep. And she cried in that, and they nominated her for an Academy Award. So, first of all, she's just a great actress. So let's let's just not. Yeah, but anyway, she played the mama in the James Brown biopic. Hey, I was looking at something today. You know how you you don't pay attention, but then you start paying attention. And I was watching this movie, and it was doing the credits, and I saw one of the greatest show business names of all time. Her name was Beverly Hills. <laughs> Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills. About that was her name. <laughs> and she was an actress in this movie, and she was like, I don't know how many movies, and I have to go and pull up Beverly Hills, the actress. But I saw that name, and said, oh, what a great name. And I'm sure it's a stage name. She probably has a Polish wow. last name. Right? All right, appreciate you, ma'am. We're listening. Hey, man, y'all be blessed. All right, Thank you're man. listening to Community Voice. Uh, when we come back, we'll be inside. Be healthy, be you. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to uh, Community Voice. We're inside Be Healthy, Be You. Miss Julia Means, Miss Brenda Buchanan, the Central Wisconsin. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. How's everybody? Good. Pretty get out good. for the eclipse yesterday? I just watched it get dark. I didn't look at the sun. <laughs> what about you? I I, mm-hmm. I, uh, I tried not to. I I was out when it got dark, you know, darker. That was, that was low. Yeah, that was a little, but um, you know the you know they worship in um, people get married. Uh, yeah, instead of that. worshiping the Creator that created it all, come on, come on, keep come on, come on, I, Pastor, I, come, I, on. I, come on, come on. <laughs> he created. I forgot the, the sun, song, the moon, and I have to get it. Total eclipse of the sun. Remember mm-hmm. that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was that uh, Bonnie Tyler, right? I don't remember who it was by. But yeah, I, I think it's Bonnie Tyler. Total, a mm-hmm. total eclipse of the sun. Yeah. Well, you know, it. It. Um, let me ask you all a question, just kind of as we talk about the moon. Does it impact? Because I've heard this anecdotally, like when there's a full moon, that impacts like behavior of people. Mm-hmm. Well, it changes with the atmospheric pressure changes in that. It does affect our bodies, but from a nurse working in certain units when it's a full moon, it gets crazy. In the ER, um, when I used to work rehab, um, especially on the older units, yeah, the people would behave. That's what I heard that people, yeah. it, it is that, and even where we get the term uh, lunatic mm-hmm. comes from lunar, lunar, which is moon. And I know it, it affects like the currents, you know, mm-hmm. when the moon Which is... all affects the changes in our bodies, too. Okay. A lot of babies mm-hmm. are born. Now, that's the other thing. Let's talk about that. Now, I understand more babies are born mm-hmm. when the barometric pressure is low. Well, and that might be affected by the moon. Because my mother said, <clears throat> I don't remember it. I was too busy trying to be born. <laughs> uh, <laughs> If you remembered, I'd be a little like worried. I'm putting it all to work, right? She's right. doing all the work. <laughs> you're yeah. like you just squeeze. I'm just, just I here. feel a little pressure here. I'm, we're almost there, but uh, they said something with the barometric pressure drops, drops mm-hmm. and that then it could impact pregnancy or certainly delivery. Well, we deliver a lot of babies. Around yeah, that a lot time. of people are born mm-hmm. during s- snowstorms mm-hmm. and thunderstorms mm-hmm. and okay yes yeah, so i did get a chance to get out and uh and see it uh it was it was amazing uh, it, it, it it was everybody really amazing. that i Two said eight. it was spectacular it was you you just um if anything it should make you in awe of god like oh my goodness oh, to see yeah. that i have just such a more enormous respect and i use the term existence 
And, and that's only because I believe that human beings are only smart part of existence, even though we believe that we're right. the most important thing in existence. Um, you know, try having existence without air. Right. OK, let's just get real basic. So now it, it was uh, it was interesting, the superstitions that we have uh, around things. But people got married. Mm-hmm. You know, the total eclipse of the sun where and then when you're seeing places where it was literally like nighttime, dark. it yeah. was oh, yeah. dark. in yeah. Indiana. It went black right. for like five minutes. And then in Texas, it was mm-hmm. a Kerrville, mm-hmm. uh, which was really weird. And then in Vermont, they sh- the woman was even pointing out stars. Mm-hmm. You know, you could see. So it, it was uh, it, 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 it was one of those things where we began to have, as you just said, Brenda, just this incredible awe of the creator and creation mm-hmm. and um, uh, how we should value that. How do you guys like the new water? Let me know if that's okay with you. Yeah, it's, it's delicious. I, I was looking. Well, it just so happens they, the store was uh, was doing, um, I guess they're going to start using this. And so I thought, I was hoping they had the glass bottles, Voss and glasses. Oh, my God. Oh, just great. Water. I wonder if they're the same ones that make the Voss vodka. Good. I don't know. Probably. You know, it was really crazy. I mean, though? they had the, the 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 bottle itself was like looks like crystal with all these cuts mm. in it. It was it was a beautiful bottle. Well, it's something about water and 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 glass. Mm-hmm. You know, any liquid in glass is mm-hmm. better taste. But um, and my niece Amara said, you know, she remembers she's on jury duty and we were having lunch and she had Voss water. And after that, Uncle Keith, yeah. Uncle Keith. Okay. Uh, okay, anything else that we need before we get into our subject matter today? No, but I think Julia should share a little bit about this past weekend. We talked yes. about the baby shower that we were having, Let's talk about the and community. man, it was incredible. Yeah, um, it was uh, a very successful baby shower. We had um, over 150 people in the building. And we had awesome um, vendors there, um, and um, and I co- I cooked some nachos, and we had food. And, turkey, yes, mm-hmm. turkey nachos. And amazingly, I'm going to say a bring, lot of people did asked bring me, meatballs? no meatballs, <laughs> not for 150 <laughs> people. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> but let me tell you, a lot of people asked if it was beef or turkey, and when I said turkey, they were like, "Oh, good." Um, I was surprised at how many people asked me that. We're, we're going, we're going more turkey. Mm-hmm. No, I, I... Jive turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Jive turkey. <laughs> we had hot dogs. They wanted to know if they were beef. beef. Yeah, were they? So, mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting because I just, you know, you hear about culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But now I've heard and have experienced halal. Halal is the Muslim, basically, kosher. Oh. Right. So you go places now, and they'll give you the, do you want halal beef? Well, you ain't going to get halal pork. That you'll never get. Right. Uh, but yes. So. And how do you like it? Oh, my God. There's a place I go to for burgers called Fatty Patty. Oh, that's the one on Burleigh. Yeah. Have you been there yet? No. I see the truck there all the time. It is so unhealthy. <laughs> but it is so good. <laughs> mm. They do. I, I stay away from the uh, euros though because they do something. But anyway, um, but yeah, that's good that people are eating. Uh, I was just going through. No, not a gyro, man. <laughs> euro, <laughs> euro, 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 euro. It's Greek. <laughs> lamb, lamb and beef pressed, right? Well, no, la- yeah, 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 yeah. It's lamb and beef. Because if you ever had real like lamb. Bologna, it don't look like it, it don't, it taste, don't taste like you like I, I didn't I didn't like I real lamb. lamb I like the you know you know like, I'm limited in my meat options. <laughs> yeah, they they usually eat that mint jelly with it. Mm. Oh, you you like that? <laughs> no, no. Keith's mind is going somewhere else. <laughs> you know, Keith's always getting a second angle here. Heard for. <laughs> Wow. He's a gymnast. <laughs> I'm lost. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, he, he, <laughs> he's out in flight. <laughs> he was talking about halal, right? The right. religious way we were talking about is. people and their yeah, more so bipolar than diet. Okay, let's get back. Yeah, back yeah. To how that. tasty it we is. Were. Yeah, so it really is. I was, uh, 
So I looked it up and it was mm-hmm. like, yeah, it is basically allowable. Mm-hmm. It's an allowable food for the Muslim faith. Mm-hmm. I think it's the way that they handle the animal mm-hmm. so that he doesn't secrete the hormones or whatever that come right. with fear. Right. You oh. know what I'm saying? It's because, you know, when you, the animal is scared, depending mm-hmm. on how you handle them, they'll secrete a certain hormone what into happens the is meat. They're moving and yeah. they're, mm-hmm. the meat gets tougher because right. when you, I don't know, if this wasn't the cooking show, she comes on. Yeah. But but our diet is important, especially mm-hmm. when it comes to that. So it was good that right. that people there were mindful of what they mm-hmm. were eating. We had a lot of men. Okay. Um, a lot of fathers, which was lot, awesome. A lot of men came, yeah. Um, and um, they were of different nationalities. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I some I I didn't know what nationality they were. You couldn't yeah guess. You know, they were different, and. Um, we we had no mistakes, no no ups, no you know no you know no drama, and uh, gave away really a lot of nice stuff. And <clears throat> the purpose of the baby shower, you know, it, of course you're going to get people to come, but the purpose of the baby shower is we try to connect the mothers with one another, mm-hmm. uh, so that they can form a bond. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I. I got that from when Mary was told to go visit Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. It is something about pregnant women. Mary, Mary Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Mary's a pretty common name. We don't know that I think, particular I think, Mary. Yeah, I'm not. I, I'm pretty sure that's not what she's talking about. Keith. I was talking about oh, Mary. the Mary, the Mary, the Mary, uh-huh. and the Elizabeth. <laughs> the Elizabeth, highly favored, High, highly very, favored. very much so. Very highly Mary, favored, Mary. and that's one of my favorite songs. You know, because it's it's like Mary. Did you know? Mm-hmm. I love that song too. Yeah. And that idea that all of us. Did you know? Did you, that know? you were carrying? Did you know? Yeah, and that gets around the maternity health. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the interesting thing about Elizabeth was she thought she was barren. So she had her own health risk she having did. her first child at the age that she had it. She did. Yeah. And, and you know, when, when I went to Pastor Sappho, Bishop Sappho, to discuss the whole um, creation of Blanket of Love, mm-hmm. he brought all this out. It just regular conversation. Black preacher. Yeah. <laughs> he just, oh, I got a sermon <laughs> for it. <laughs> And I'm going, oh, okay. <laughs> Let me and take no, my text. Yeah. It works. <laughs> oh, he, he brought he brought all of this out. And it 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 is true. You right. know, like Mary, um Elizabeth was a, a, a older woman that uh, was um bringing forth her first child and, right. and all the risks. And 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 she was, and we don't know if she had miscarriages prior to that. We don't know, you know. We don't so, know. but that whole maternal health piece mm-hmm. is 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 real important, especially when we begin to talk about uh, how pregnancy impacts, particularly descendants of enslaved Africans. Oh, we are not doing well. Mm-hmm. Um, our mat- our mat- maternal mortality is terrible, and in in twenty twenty four. And and it, it, what blows my mind is it doesn't matter whether you're rich, poor, or middle class. Um, mm-hmm. It it doesn't seem educated to matter. or not educated. Um, they're not doing well, and um, and so I think we do need to go back biblically more, because <laughs> even when they had the midwives and and everything in the South, um, they did they did. But we probably had, uh, you know, you hear stories about people who were raised by a grandparent mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because their mom passed, passed away during childbirth. During childbirth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then if you're thinking now, and, and really our proximity to enslavement was closer then mm-hmm. than it is now as we move away from it. So we don't know how many people actually could have lost. That's true. You know, I mean, that mm-hmm. we don't. So. You know, this idea that there's a myth about, oh, we're having babies. But uh, <clears throat> my mom had, I think, one miscarriage before she had me. Mm. Some people ask, are you the miscarriage? But uh, we- <laughs> 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 
So, but no, I mean, it, it was, and the stress. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my mom. She really had us relatively, not relatively late, but then late because I think she was 23. Yeah. Um, which is mm -hmm. older, you know, then for Back a first then. child. Mm -hmm. But now we have women who are delaying uh, getting pregnant, uh, which then could really impact them mm -hmm. on what that pregnancy is going to be. Health. Health. Sure, yeah. their health, the health of the baby. We know those eggs are, you know, much older now. They're 38, 40, 45 years old instead of, you know, 20 years old. Um, so higher risk of like Down syndrome, other types of things with the older eggs. So now, that old sperm ain't good either. It. <laughs> 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 Well, at least, at least, the, blame it on the old sperm. Old, blame it on. Don't the we sperm. create new sperm every day? You do, you do, but you got older organs creating that new sperm. Okay, you got, uh, you know, other health issues associated with creating old that sperm. sperm. Right, old sperm. My eggs are hurt when you say old eggs. So, <laughs> but is it? And, and 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 we talk to the 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 guys. Boy, I tell you, folks, spend some time in your science classes, you have a better understanding. So here's dude sitting up here telling me about, because everybody's talking about their pullout game, right? Mm -hmm. This is oh, all I got to no hear. Thing. I know. It don't work. And you're trying to explain to this dude, dude, it's microscopic. Right. You don't even, yeah, I mean. It's out there before you even know before it. Before you, before you know think it. it's Your happening. leakage. Right. Right. You know, so you, you create a baby and you thinking, oh, man, I didn't do it. Yeah, you did. Mm -hmm. You left just enough because it don't take a lot. Mm -hmm. yep. So we talk about these things. And then, you know, I, I think also the circumstances that people find themselves in when they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, if, if you're in a very stressful situation, I would think that that would have a negative impact on the pregnancy, right? Yeah. And, and the babies too. I mean, studies show that babies that are, you know, born into relationships or where there's a lot of stress in, in, for the person that's pregnant, you know, they have, um, cognitive delays, they have learning disabilities, um, just, I mean, all those things, because again, all those stress hormones are running through their veins too, while they're being developed. I think, uh, we put so much on women. This is why I believe that women are, are the stronger sex. I mean, just what you, um, what, uh, I don't know if you've ever I'll seen. I'll agree with that, Steve. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steve. I, I, I was wondering if you were going to catch that. No. <laughs> but you <laughs> did. Uh, Julie's just sitting that's, there that's like my, I told you that was my club name. <laughs> <laughs> hey Steve! Uh, I thought you were that's Steve. everybody's Steve. name is Steve. Everybody's Steve, right? Yeah, well, that's the that's the easy name to use. Yeah, I'm Steve. What, mm. what do you think of are younger women experiencing um negative uh pregnancy experiences, even though they're young, you would think that if you're young, oh, they most definitely you're better are. equipped to deal with things though, right? Physically? Yeah, but that, again, that whole, um, how they live, where they live, what they have access to, stress in their life, um, you know, that that's part of the reason we have the Blanket of Love program, because even though some of these women may be very young, they're still at high risk based on all the other things going on in their life. You know, they're, they're amazing, though, like you said, Keith. Um, the ones that I think are going to do the worst are the ones who really do well. Um, and with a little support, um, they, they, they're they awesome. Um, but they definitely need that support. Um, a what lot does that of, support look like when you say support? Well, I, I have went to the um, doctors with them because, you know, Sometimes um, when I first started with Blanket of Love, which was 20 years ago, uh, most of my uh, young ladies were um, teens. And so you were dealing with that teen pregnancy, that that angry mother that she's mad because her daughter's pregnant and 
um, all those family dynamics that's going on. I used to tell the girls, you have to learn how to eat humble pie. You can't go in with no attitude, you know. Um, and, and <laughs> you gotta. Yeah, I'm pregnant, and mm, yeah. right, what you gonna do? <laughs> what you gonna do? <laughs> you know, you gotta, cause a lot of those mother, a lot of the mothers that I worked with, they were like, we would not have gotten through this if we didn't have the support of you guys, mm -hmm. um, because I needed somebody in the middle of this, and um, the young ladies eventually learned that their moms were right um because the mothers were struggling themselves mm -hmm. and now you telling me i got another mouth to feed i gotta take care of you and your baby and and, and you not acting right in the first place so well and back then there was a lot of shame attached to it too whereas that's there's no shame attached anymore well if you were religious you had to go mm -hmm. before the church mm -hmm. she would have to go, to go before the church before the church not he right um and, and i think again one of those things that we we put so much on women we really do i mean it it is um uh one of those things obviously if anybody ever read the the scarlet letter mm -hmm. you know we we talk about how it is the women who and I put this in quotations because I don't think any pregnancy should be shameful, mm -hmm. uh, but carry the shame, right? Because mm -hmm. you carry the proof of it, mm -hmm. uh, whatever that relationship was. I mm -hmm. mean, that's the byproduct of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that the society, other pressures that we might have, um, what about, and, 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 the, and the teen pregnancy rate is dropping. Wow. It, it is, is down. Which is wonderful. Which means some messaging is you finally get through. getting through. Mm -hmm. So when we have these conversations, a lot of times, <clears throat> old people don't go, girl, when I had Keith, uh, that was 1957. You know, it's in the 20th century, man. I mean, that that we have to... We like, are getting better. In terms yes. of the information, the health information, mm -hmm. right? The physical mm -hmm. information, you need to understand how your body works. I always tell the story. I was... <clears throat> I was uh, doing my sex education training at Planned Parenthood, and I had women in there who had had children, and there were parts of their body they didn't even know they had, they or even know. how it worked. Right. You know, and they had children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're going like, "Oh, I didn't know that." Mm -hmm. So I think you know, in terms of our awareness, because would you would you say that um, I don't know? It's hard to say because most babies aren't planned. They're not, and that's... Uh, th so how do we prepare for something that yeah. we hadn't planned on? Yeah. The, the, uh, some of the more educated women do plan. Um, they plan around their careers, their education, their, so they do plan. And that's why we're having the, the, the furry. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. But um, so some of our babies are planned, but... Uh, <laughs> But um, I wasn't. I know most most aren't. <laughs> I definitely wasn't. And uh, <laughs> and and because of that, a lot of times the women aren't physically prepared to carry a pregnancy because their folic acid is down mm -hmm. and and different. Uh, their body is not uh, physically prepared uh, for a pregnancy, and it was it wasn't planned. But uh, when it is planned and you are healthy, you, there are still things going on. And for the first time in healthcare, I've uh, uh, seen them say, "Yeah, racism has a lot to do." What? <laughs> That's shocking. What? <laughs> racism. Racism. Is it getting back to slavery? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. So. Uh, they're they're starting to say that. Um, uh, have you seen that um, movie? What was it called? Where they they did that documentary on those uh, black moms that died mm -hmm. and the dads mm -hmm. got together and um, oh yeah yeah. Um, um, I I got an opportunity to meet them. Um, the the mother of one of one of the fathers uh, really uh, was fighting for her. The, the daughter that died and this uh, a husband is left raising this baby. But um, he said that they kept uh, referring to him as baby daddy or something like that. Term and, we don't use in yeah, fatherhood at all. Yes. And and we don't use baby mama either. Uh, 
thank you. That they used have a to name. Just, that right. used to They're just make my skin crawl. Oh, me. here's here's the female. Mm. That's my baby daddy. No, the female. The female. Just calling them the female. Just calling them the female. Which puts us kind of almost into this idea that yeah, dogs are dogs have females. You know, it's like oh. it's so um what's the word I want to say impersonal, mm-hmm. but it's it is mm-hmm. it's less than human that referral mm-hmm. when we kind of like yeah, female or baby mama, we don't we don't use deadbeat dance. Okay. Uh <clears throat> all those things. And I think the the stress again, the baby wasn't planned. Uh <clears throat> I was just trying to hit it and go. And I left a little some some here. And now she has to figure out how mm-hmm. am I going to take care of this baby? And it looks like I'm going to be doing it by myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That probably puts an enormous amount of stress on her during that pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And and our families can only absorb so much. Mm-hmm. And so um, although our families have absorbed quite a bit and we've done great jobs mm-hmm. with it, but um, it is it, it does. It puts weight on the whole family Mm -hmm. um but we we work it out but most of our women have high blood pressure or pregnancy induced hypertension and and everything else that comes along with that because they're very uh edematous you know they're swelling um and they can have seizures and i mean it's Mm life-threatening and um we i've i've been with women that have died from um maternal um child but the ones that that i've known usually were because they were using um street drugs that, that doesn't work well um and the thing about it a lot of the girls will tell me that they smoke weed because it calms them we had a, I don't know if you were at the session we had when we were still doing uh, the life course mm-hmm. and um, what was the name of it? We ended up uh, doing something here. Uh, it's the questions. It's something question that you asked where well, the woman, the doctor, oh, God, what's the name of that question? They'll come to me. Uh, the doctor in Boston, mm-hmm. who was one of the people behind this question they're asking, because they're asking questions about second pregnancies. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Um, and, um, but she said her biggest issue wasn't because women would quit smoking cigarettes, Mm -hmm. but they were still smoking weed. They Mm -hmm. were still smoking. They, they Mm -hmm. smoked that. And one girl told me, she said, I was so happy when I found out that he was normal because I was doing a lot of weed, uh, during that time. Um, and. And 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 it used to be they kind of hid it, but now, now they they're just open with it. Tell you that they mm, mm, they're smoking. Mm, uh, well, they're on Facebook doing it. Mm, you know, mm. doing their little live. Th- I'm like, why 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 do you do that? In Wisconsin. Say? Yeah, right. Why would you do Across that? Cross the border. Mm-hmm. You can do it in Illinois. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but mm-hmm. this Wisconsin, we we haven't. Uh, what well, talk? Hey, I'm sorry. Oh, well, I was gonna say, and and now Brenda Brenda works with. Um, pregnant women that um are in recovery from so. all kinds of you know from yeah. heroin crack alcohol you know all those different things and um many of them are scared while they're pregnant because they don't know what their baby's going to be like when it's born even though they're clean now through part of their pregnancy they weren't or through most of their pregnancy for some of them weren't well, yeah, and then we we talk. What is it? Uh, fetal alcohol syndrome. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's which another, is another one. one where people are still drinking. Right, and you know you can be a person that has a very limited drinks, maybe a couple drinks during your pregnancy, and have a baby with fetal alcohol mm-hmm. syndrome. Or you can have somebody that's been abused in alcohol, and it doesn't. It's the right time. It's just mm-hmm. right when certain genes are mm-hmm. you know um, splitting, and it, it's crazy. A millisecond. Mm-hmm. I took a genetics course when I was in college and the whole thing about uh, the birth of a baby or a baby born normal is truly a miracle. I mean, cause any millisecond there could be a change in the DNA that could, um, you know, 
just enough lack of oxygen. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is just amazing to me every time a child is born mm-hmm. um, normal and healthy. <laughs> For those of us who might think that we were normal. Right. Um, yeah, let's use the word healthy, <laughs> healthy instead of normal. Right, normal. Because normal is, uh, yeah. And, and, you know, and, and, and I guess for a mom, though, I think when you I was listening to a pastor, he said that he was just so happy that his kids had, you know, 10 fingers and 10 mm-hmm. toes. Mm-hmm. But between fingers and toes, there's a whole lot, there's else. a whole lot going on there. And 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 how these how the environment really does impact mm-hmm. um, this. And, and you know, what where, where doctors are telling women, you know, you need to go on bed rest. But it's hard because let's say she has another child, Mm -hmm. you know, she's still or she's working. Mm -hmm. It it makes it. uh, And that's why I say that women are exceptionally strong beings because of just what they're uh, expected to do. Uh, There is a book and a movie called The Good Earth. And uh, in this, you know, it's in China and they're out and now they have to get this harvest in either before the locust comes or the weather comes. Woman delivers her baby wraps the baby up and goes right out in the field helping them. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. And it's an expectation. Right. And, and well, in China, you ain't really got a choice. <laughs> <laughs> you better but, get out there and do but it. But most countries take care of their um, pregnant moms and um, new moms that they, you know, they have better time off than we do in America. Mm-hmm. They, <clears throat> they, they've they come a lot further than we have as far as helping women bond with their babies and before mm-hmm. sending them back to work. And most uh, civilized countries um, are really positive about um, new moms. Mm-hmm. You know, there's some European countries, you get a whole year off Mm-hmm. And they provide you with, uh, you know, person to help clean your home, help care for your baby, all of that free of charge um, well, in some countries. What that runs up against in America is um, the, um, okay, let's take a break. We're inside Be Healthy, Be You. Miss Julia Means, Miss Brenda Buchanan, Ascension, Wisconsin. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Milwaukee. This is Michelle Bryant, your host to Say Something Real. When President Joe Biden wanted to talk to Milwaukee voters, he called WNOV. And welcome uh, President Biden to Milwaukee and to WNOV. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. I had a great event downtown and I'm at the headquarters now and uh, we're feeling really good. It was a great day. We had a lot of volunteers, we had a thousand volunteers going out here in, in Wisconsin, out of Milwaukee in particular. So we are ready to roll in Wisconsin. Well, I'll tell you what, God love you. <laughs> in Wisconsin, we win it all. For up-to-date election information, keep it locked on WNOV, 860 AM, 106.5 FM. Coming this month to Milwaukee Rep, fiery anthems from the High Priestess of Soul in Nina Simone for women. This inspirational show shines a light on the civil rights icon, featuring live performances of hits like Everything Must Change and To Be Young, Gifted, and Black. Broadway World calls Nina's trailblazing journey riveting, relevant, and oh so real as she becomes the unforgettable voice behind impactful songs that you're going to love. Nina Simone for women is at Milwaukee Rep April 16th to May 12th. Tickets at Milwaukee WNOV 860 and W293CX 106.5 Milwaukee.
Inside Community Voice on WNOV 860 AM and 106.5 FM with your host, Keith Paris. Uh, welcome back to uh, Community Voice and No Inside Be Healthy Be You. Okay, Barry. <laughs> 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 and, you know, I got a. I was I was talking to a guest yesterday, and we were talking off air, and I told her how much I hate my voice. Oh, you have a nice voice. Yeah, I hate my voice, and so um, when I hear me, I just cringe. Like, oh, who's that? That's you. And it's like I feel like it's like you know when they do that, the the, the on the chalkboard. Mm-hmm. That's I kind of feel about my voice. The importance of support. Yes. And this is why we do blanket of love. Mm-hmm. And it's it's nice that you work with the men mm-hmm. because um, men are so important during this time, right. and um, um, they can help help the mom. Um, I always try to tell them that they're the coach. You know, they they can um, relate to a coach, uh, especially during the labor and delivery. Um, they're they're big support. They're not there just to watch television or uh be involved in something else they're there too and their behavior like not mm-hmm. smoking around her right mm-hmm. you know things like that where she's getting secondhand smoke certainly not smoking the weed around her mm-hmm. you know it, you know this in this spring right now and i i'm just in um um awe of how the birds built their nests that sometimes the dads do a lot of that work inappropriately in inappropriate places where they get on your nerve because they're messing well, let's up not, your let's, property. Let's not, let's not breeze past Brenda's point there. The <laughs> dad, right. right. The, the dad's dad's got a flying right back past, let's get... They used to always take apart my whole basketball net. Like, <laughs> really? And go build their little... They, they build mm-hmm. their nest. And then they stand guard. Mm-hmm. They step back and they stand guard and watch well, their But they said that that happened yesterday. Mm, oh that, yeah that, that birds return to their nest because yeah. it's nighttime and i didn't even think about this they heard they come together they go in their nest mm-hmm. for protection mm-hmm. at night mm-hmm. because you have these nocturnal mm-hmm. big, at, big birds right like owls have night mm-hmm. vision right yeah and so it, it that was kind of seeing how we just go into this whole evolutionary behavior when it comes to survival mm-hmm. and and that is it, it, if nothing else I've learned from you all, it is how organisms are always fighting to survive. Mm-hmm. Always. No matter what the organism is. Mm-hmm. And and I always say that to the young ladies, too. <clears throat> First of all, I tell the moms they must know how to pray because as a mother, you're going to pray for the rest of your life for that <laughs> child. <laughs> right. No matter how old they get, that child is going to Can be. I do a Bishop Sappho? Oh. <laughs> uh, Job <laughs> prayed for his kids. Read the first he chapter did. of Job. He, he prayed for his kids on a regular. He did. But they still died. They all <laughs> died. <laughs> but he they... did make some more. <laughs> they did make some more. <laughs> there's a happy so God ending. gave him the ability to bring right, more children. Is, right. Okay. There were some more children. Mm-hmm. And so um, but no, I mean that was the thing where you 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 know you're constantly you're gonna always be in prayer for those children. Mm-hmm. If you're not, you should be. Yeah. And um, so I always I always tell them that that they they need to and they need to start when when the when they find out they're pregnant. You know. <laughs> I think they should have before be, right. <laughs> Well, maybe if they were, <laughs> wouldn't have as many before. Right. They would be pregnant, but okay. <laughs> right and not the prayer please don't let any be left behind right right, right. it is uh yeah but you know when julia a lot of those were long when she started at teenagers but she was at the birth of most of them back then uh, yeah that's, that's uh, yeah. but uh, but uh, i admire those dudes who are there with their babies born yeah. uh-uh, i like to go back to the old days put me out there when and we're no, smoking and cigarettes and all <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back then you could do all of that. <laughs> you got the dads yeah. in the room. They wouldn't right. let the fathers in. Right? No, uh-uh. <laughs> my, my husband was, um, 
gambling with the other <laughs> fathers who was going to come out first. And oh, okay. So they, oh, the other fathers in the waiting room, yeah, they set they up a little out, gambling yeah, session. Yeah, they out there <laughs> gambling. We in there. That baby don't come out the right complexion. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's why you just smoke it. <laughs> Is that gonna be my baby or not? Uh, we... <laughs> and that gets us back to DNA, y'all. Anyway, we <laughs> that baby looked just like me. Oh, she liked dudes that look just like you. <laughs> right. I mean, so, you know, let's right. <laughs> We're going to do the DNA test. Just, just, <laughs> just to be sure. DNA is a good thing. Oh, it's, it's a great good. thing. It's it yeah. very great much thing. so. No, not. No, oh, very man. Much. Now, you know, it, it's helped solve so many crimes. So many problems, yeah. Uh, so. The guy up in Idaho who killed the, well, allegedly killed the four students. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thought he was a master criminal. He sure did. He thought he, he shaved his body, but he left just enough DNA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just a little dab of do you. That's all you need. Oh, man. So now if you go into, uh, they had like, it was somebody, they found um, his DNA on, it was thrown out pizza. Mm -hmm. And they're they going through it. the garbage. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, and and, yeah, and yeah. then they were able to get the DNA. Yeah. So the, the science is really important. I think science, uh, science the spirit is, is important too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and men men are so valuable. They they oh now we valuable. They play in the well. The women role. do so much better when they have a supportive oh, yeah. father mm -hmm. yeah. in the light in their life. Yeah, and and if that father <clears throat> makes sure that there's a home and uh, support for the mom and the baby when they come home, because it's a big deal. That's a big deal. I think that yeah, we have to have a more holistic view of this, and this gets controversial. What? How should we? Excuse me. Teach young people about healthy sexual relationships, and what does that look like? Um, and that's that's controversial, right? Because mm -hmm. many of us believe that young people should not have sex until they're thirty, thirty-five, or married, or married. Okay. Um, <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, no, I, I think that um, we can we can be healthy. I, I just I'm just of the let's not bring a child here until we're as ready as we can be. Now I understand mm -hmm. things happen. Mm -hmm. Things happen. Uh, part of why you know they suggest that you be married. Obviously, now you have two people there provide material support, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, that's always why we got married for children. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and kind of we, but now we realize that you can have children and not be married. It's difficult. But yeah. But, but some, some women make are, it work. they're better, you know, I, I asked my mom this question. I said, what do you think my life would have been like had you and my dad stayed together? And my mom said, well, you probably wouldn't have turned out to be the person that you are today. Mm hmm. There she goes again. Um, my mother always gave me these rhetorical things that you had to think about. But her point was that we can put people in a very negative situation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just for appearances. Mm -hmm. And it's really toxic. That's true. very much so. You know, I mean, and you had people, they were abusive before she got pregnant. And they're still being abusive physically and, and, and verbally. Doing the pregnancy. Because mm -hmm. they might be very mad, too. I mean, they're angry. They got more responsibility. They're more stressed. Right. And then when that baby's born, you got the baby in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. And that baby's at risk, too. Right. For being harmed. So what are some of the things that we're doing? You know, you do a blanket of love in terms of when women are um, in that the maternal. Yeah, we, we encourage them to get their prenatal visits. Uh, we explain things that they may not understand. We try to teach them what a healthy diet looks like, a, a mommy menu, uh, and so that they can um, not only take care of themselves while they're pregnant, but also start thinking about how to do um, good meals for their children. But when you say a healthy diet, they're eating for two. Right. On average, they, they say for one baby, maybe an extra 400 calories. Okay. 
um, a day is as much as you need. So, that's, and that's a burger, right? Or that, <laughs> I mean, a, not, a burger, not, right? It's not, it's not like it's, it, it's not a lot of food. Not like we. Oh, I'm eating for two, and then you got fifty pounds to lose. No, about four hundred for one baby. It's about four hundred well, calories a day, but, and hopefully that should be four hundred calories of nutrition, not just junk. Talk about you mentioned high blood pressure, mm -hmm. but we didn't mention obesity. Mm -hmm. and, and and it it hurts when you get pregnant when you become pregnant and you already are obese mm -hmm. that that puts stress even more stress on your body mm -hmm. and then some women that are are tiny that that become obese and it doesn't doesn't take much you're only supposed to gain about 30 pounds mm -hmm. on the high end that's a lot of weight during the whole nine months. Well, a lot of that, you got a larger fluid volume. You've okay. got the baby, you've got the placenta, you've got all those extra things. So when you start going over that 25, 30 pounds, it's, it's fat. Mm -hmm. And, and then you, now you got to lose it, mm -hmm. you know, afterwards. So that, that, that gets, and the, the thing about the pregnancy induced hypertension or, or, um, um, becoming, um, eclamptic, um, that was eclampsia. Pre-eclampsia, and then you have uh, eclampsia. That's when that that's that pregnancy-induced hypertension, and that condition that causes um, high blood pressure, kidney fluid, failure, kidney all failure. kinds of things. It's just not good. What, mm -hmm. Isn't there a certain normal raising of the blood pressure anyway? Said so even if you're healthy because of the pregnancy, right? Well, there may be a little. Again, you have more fluid you know, in your body. Okay. Um, but still there's, there's acceptable stages. So just because your blood pressure is high, doesn't mean you're preeclamptic or, mm -hmm. you know, you can have elevated blood pressure, but when it spills over and starts affecting your organs, um, your risk for seizures, um, kidney, you know, shut down, heart. all of that heart, that's when that preeclampsia turns into eclampsia. That is a life threatening situation. That baby has to be delivered. The, and for, the, it could happen during pregnancy. It could happen during delivery, and it, it happen can happen after. After, I mean, after mm -hmm. you home, it could happen. Yeah, a week two later, um, some women end up back in the hospital with eclampsia. Mm -hmm. So we have a caller. So they've been very patient. They said, "Yeah, it sure has been." Caller, welcome to the program. Well, thank you. I, I, I appreciate the um. Oh, it's Tyrone the, W. Next the call. No, and, and the insurance, man. <laughs> <laughs> I sure been on here. <laughs> it's just Tyrone. Yes, sir. <laughs> thank you, man. I, I appreciate it. I, I just, <laughs> good morning, ladies. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, nephew. Good morning, Mr. Carvey. Good morning, Milwaukee. Yes, it is indeed. I, uh, <laughs> I, I I've been uh, needing and wanting to get in, but you know, um. Just to uh, play on the word real quick, I mean, eclampsia, preeclampsia, and eclipse, I mean, just, just let that uh, sim uh, uh, simmer for a moment, <laughs> excuse me, day, day after the eclipse there, eclipsia and preeclampsia, I mean, that, that that's something, I, you know, I'll read more up on that, but yeah, thank you for that. Uh, a wealth of knowledge this morning, ladies, I appreciate it, I really do. Hey, Tyrone, it was interesting you said that, so think about it, if you were at St. Joseph's, St. Luke's, wherever mm -hmm. they're delivering babies, at 208, Mm -hmm. <laughs> yesterday <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> we got the full as much as we can see it's amazing i wonder how many babies were born mm -hmm. during well, the eclipse yeah absolutely yeah that, 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 that that's a wonderful course i don't have that information i that, yeah that would be interesting to find out we're it like, because we're like all outside thing, watching you know? it so <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah that's almost like a leap year thing you know what do right, they do right. you know on you know that they do it on the 28th or the first you know or what you know for leap year yeah very interesting yeah that, that it'll be interesting to see the uh, the data behind Excuse me, behind that there, but yeah, ladies. Um, to to, to another keeps point there about uh, how, how we get here. You know, you, you you know, I look at it from uh, you know the earth being an egg itself. You know, you look at things greening up now, and you know, come from the earth, you go back to the earth. You know, ash to ashes, dust to dust. You know, uh, but then again, going back to the womb there, when you were speaking about the um the spermakete, um, uh, you know, I know Keith a couple weeks ago. You know, how have we evolved? You know, but they actually swim. They swim until they cling on to something solid, which is the egg. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the womb being a universe and an ocean, you know, for the liquid that's in it, yeah, we do swim. We do swim first before we walk because we, you know, we cling on to that egg there and then we develop it. And then, you yeah, know, it, it is what it is, just like the butterfly, you know, it metamorphoses. Mm -hmm. um, 
So yeah, uh, uh, you know, from the womb to the tomb, you know, uh, to tie the moon into it, you know, there's a lot that the, you know, uh, um, a woman, a woman can't do much when she's menstruating, but there are certain times when the moon is full there. Oh man, the, 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 the eggs are flowing and yeah, man, she'll get boom, like a balloon, you know, I blew up like a balloon girl. That's because them eggs was flowing at that time of the month when, you know, she had finished menstruating and those eggs were flowing. So yeah, you know, the, the universe has a lot to do with us because we are part of it too. It's just have to, we have to understand how we are part of it too. But yeah, we do swim. Uh, we weren't necessarily fish first. I don't know. That, that's a deep, deeper story there. You know, it, it's a sperm, a smaller version of a fish, you know, but they do swim. Yeah. They, <laughs> yeah. We were talking about last week. They uh, look like a tadpole. Yeah, you know, right. We right, were making right, the right. argument like you're not putting your mom's womb whole. Mm. And I was making the argument for evolution. So we yeah. weren't. And, and so then they said, yeah, we did basically crawl out the sea. But we're talking, y'all, about millions of years. We're not talking about eight months. Nine right, months. right, 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 so, right. <laughs> and, 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 and just so I can say this, this has made God any less God <laughs> because we have a deeper understanding mm -hmm. of how existence works. Right. Because right, right. we still haven't figured out how to create. We well, have not. Yeah, man, cre man, creation carries a lot there, though, Keith, right, because, right. yeah, man I mean, can, you know. Man cannot well, create well, nor destroy matter. So we haven't we figured say, that out yet. You know, when we say God created man in his image, well, you know, then we say, well, you know, uh, our image, well, you know, does God look like us? Or, you know, is that physical or is that spiritual? So, yeah, spirit you can't see, but if we're breathing, he breathed the breath of life in us. So, yeah, we're working, walking around with the Holy Spirit in us. But yeah, he, you know, well, that, that, that's the same for the, the evil ones, too. They've got breath in them, too. So there's a lot to unpack there. I mean, we could go all day, but yeah. So yeah, just, you know, the evil ones, they got breath in them, too. So, but, you know, uh, uh, are, are we just the, the, the spiritual version of God? Or, you know, what, what does, the, the, you know, in God's image, what does, it, what, what does that really mean? hope we're not the spiritual version of God. <laughs> well, <laughs> but that's would, another day, another yeah, show. But thank you. would be a great commentary on God. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, you know, I just want to stress that if you know someone that is pregnant or um, are around someone that's pregnant, um, be kind to them. Um, and Blanket of Love is always available. Um, they can um, join our program. Uh, we don't care where they're going to deliver at. Um, but um, we just want to be there to support the pregnant women. We don't care if you're doing drugs or if you had did drugs because they need help too. Mm -hmm. um, we don't blame or shame anybody. Mm -hmm. We want healthy babies and um, we work with them. Um, we, we try to provide car seats for them and um, the other equipment that they would need because we don't want babies sleeping with the moms. Um, well, we have a lot. You were talking about the level of support, obviously, the time off, <coughs> but just the work you all do and other groups do <coughs> excuse me, mm -hmm. to provide uh, car seats, mm -hmm. uh, pack and play, mm -hmm. uh, to talk to folks about, you know, your nutrition as much as you can. Again, you're talking about people now who might be on very, very fixed income. Mm -hmm. And I would think that a healthier diet is going to cost a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but then they're eligible for WIC. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, it, it, we do have support out there. Yeah, WIC is important. Yeah, that and, nutritional and, piece. And they they say that we don't utilize WIC enough, that right. they use it during the pregnancy and, and with the babies for the infant formula. But then after that, they don't use it. And they can use it up to five years. And we're at the work that we were doing around the idea of babies reaching their first birthday. Mm -hmm. A lot of babies don't. They sure don't. They don't. All right. You're listening to Community Voice. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Financial Literacy Month, presented by the Milwaukee County Office of Equity. We invite you, the listeners of WNOV, to learn more about how to protect, grow, and invest your dollars. Calling all high school students. 
Do you act, sing, or play an instrument? Are you a scientist, filmmaker, playwright, or visual artist? If so, the NAACP Afro-Academic Cultural Technological Scientific Olympics Program is for you. Sign up to compete in the local AXO competition on Sunday, April 21st. Gold medalists will automatically win an opportunity to compete at the National NAACP AXO competition in Las Vegas, Nevada this summer. With 32 AXO categories to choose from, there's definitely room to shine. For more information about the NAACP AXO program, visit NAACPMKE.org or call 414-562-1000. The Milwaukee Public Library Foundation is a supporting force behind the incredible programs at our libraries. The Milwaukee Public Library Foundation engages foundations, corporations, and generous donors to support 90% of the 6,000 programs hosted in Milwaukee's 13 neighborhood branches. Whether you're into reading, technology, or just hanging out with friends, the foundation makes sure everyone has access to amazing books, cool workshops, and awesome programs. Did you know that the Milwaukee Public Library's meeting spaces were utilized for almost 3,000 workshops and events last year, covering topics ranging from financial literacy to technology skills and beyond. Support also comes from the Milwaukee Art Museum, now presenting Idris Khan, Repeat After Me. Spanning his entire creative journey, the exhibition is the U.S. Museum debut for the British artist. Through photography, sculpture, and painting, visitors will witness Khan's exploration of repetition to mark time. More info is at mam.org. Hey, Milwaukee, my name is Martina, and I'm with the Independent Living Supports Pilot Program team. We help adults 55 plus and those 18 plus living with disabilities, provide Providing up to $7,200 for home services, medical equipment, home modifications, and more. There's less than 30 days left to sign up for this program. See if you qualify today. Call 414-289-6874. Again, that's 414-289-6874. This program is made possible by Milwaukee County and Wisconsin Department of Health and Human Services. You're listening to WNOV 860 and W293CX. 106.5 106.5 Milwaukee. All right, welcome back to Community Voice. And again, as we we finish up, be healthy, be you. Uh, We are talking about this is um, this is Black Maternal Care. Talk much, Black Maternal Care Month. And so we're dealing with the issues now. We're talking about primarily uh, the impact of pregnancy on descendants of enslaved African women. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 why that group? He said, because when you look at the birth outcomes, when you look at the number of women who die uh, during pregnancy, mm-hmm. black women make up a higher percentage of that population. We do. Yeah, significantly higher. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, and I just want to say that we have a, a community social worker that um, Brenda Hoskins uh, and she specifically can work with um, pregnant moms and help them sort out some of the social issues that they're dealing with. And her number is 414-465-3637. That's 
465-3637. Leave her a voicemail and she'll get back to you. But uh, sometimes you need a social worker. Some people are scared of social workers. Mm -hmm. uh, that was always um, back in the day when you had the white car in front of your house. It used to be county social workers that meant that you had a more dysfunctional home than anybody else on that dysfunctional block. <laughs> <laughs> you just got the, turned the, in. Right, right. Everybody's house is dealing with a certain level of dysfunction. That's the last thing we better have when we have a social worker out in front of my mama's house. You know, I, and I don't know. Maybe this became a later 20th century piece where, um, you know, young people would threaten to call somebody on their mamas. Mm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, well, they were teaching them, you know, it's your body. Nobody has the right to touch your body, you know. Including your mama? Yeah, I, I remember my son telling me he was going to call the police on me one day. I said, fine. I went and packed him a little bag. <laughs> I said, you go ahead and call because guess who's leaving? You. <laughs> They're taking you away. And I'm be sitting right here watching this TV, eating my food. So you go crying, ahead and Crying, missing your baby. Yeah. I'm going to be crying, missing uh -huh. you, but you going... I, my mom was he, going. He decided not to call. My mom was going to. I, I just thirteen was just a tough, tough year, right? And I, I was tripping so bad. So my mama just got frustrated. I did something. My mama got frustrated. She said, "I'm not even going to whoop you." Uh, she said, "That's worse." Well, she was going to start whooping me, uh -huh. and then she stopped. She said, "No, nah, uh-uh." She said, uh, "I'm going to send your blank to the home to get out to the, <laughs> uh -oh. to the detention center, right?" Uh, you know, back then nobody wanted to go to DT, right? <laughs> But then I figured, look, DT is going to be better than this whooping I'm about to get. So I said to my mother, I said, well, send me. Mm. Uh-oh. And my mother stepped back. She was shocked. Uh -huh. She was hurt. And so she started walking away. She said, okay, okay, then you're going in the morning. And so she, Gary's room, you had to walk through Gary's room to get to my room. And Gary had this linoleum for him. My mother walked hard. Uh -oh. Fast, I hear. Do, 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 do. Then halfway through, she stopped. And then I heard like the footsteps coming back towards me because I, I, you know, I deferred the whooping. My mother said, "I'm gonna whoop your blankety blank tonight <laughs> and send <laughs> your blankety blank in the morning." <laughs> you don't get both now, right? <laughs> I get yeah. up in the morning because she didn't take me out. I get up in the morning. <laughs> she said, you still want to go to the home? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> that was the version I was trying. <laughs> uh, the beat that I was going to take in the detention center was going to be far worse right. than anything I would have got at home. I was just trying to get you off my behind. And it worked for about... 33 seconds. Yeah. And my mama caught herself saying, oh. And that's where we get that one over there. And she calls me her special child. Because <laughs> I just thought I was so smart. I just, and I got her. Oh, I'm sitting there celebrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He thought she was home. bad. The last thing she had to go to Metropolitan and explain where his keep. He's out of detention. She don't want to do that. <laughs> you talked about Shay, right? right? You don't want to, you know, so no, that was too crazy. But yeah, she handled that. I'm call, call. Welcome to the program. Yeah, I, I'm really enjoying your program. I want to ask you a question. Uh, when I think about some of the uh, the Hispanic women, mm -hmm. like the Mexican women, it seems like they have a very low infant mortality rate. I don't know if it's the food. You never hear about the high infant. You hear about high infant mortality rates. Uh, even if it doesn't really matter as far as uh, they say as well, the black women are well educated. Even the ones that are well educated, they seem that they have higher infant mortality rates, and they have their children tend to be sicker compared to some of the Hispanic women who tend to have lesser education. I mean, it's a food, or it's an American culture, or it's a, what's what's going on there? You never hear anything about the Asians having issues of high infant mortality rate, especially the Chinese, Japanese, or Koreans. I mean, uh, as if it was something we can learn from uh, what those people are doing. I know there's stress and stress in everyday life, but there's stress. And uh, I mean, I think about these people coming across the border. I mean, mm -hmm. some of them probably are pregnant, and this thing the kind of stress they're going through. But I, I mean, never hear about the. Uh, I always hear about the high rate of uh, blank infant mortality compared to other uh, ethnic groups. We have the highest the white, Hispanic, mm -hmm. but well, we're yeah. seeing Hispanic women. Their their second generation uh, is coming up. And one of the comparisons they used was looking at women 
who immigrate from Africa here mm -hmm. and their birth outcomes are the same as European women. Yeah. But the next uh -huh. generation, they begin to experience some of the negative birth outcomes and maternal health challenges. And so, as we said earlier, it could be the uniqueness of the racism that's experienced in America that can contribute. Because even when I was looking at the data for the city, uh, African Americans were the highest, mm -hmm. but Hispanics are growing now. Mm -hmm. Right. They used to be, they used to have really good birth outcomes, but now in right, the last right. 10, 15 years, part of that um, they think is because of the, um, a lot of the political stuff that was going on with um, Hispanics and the fear of being sent back. And, you know, there was a time mm -hmm. where we started to see more hatred, overt mm -hmm. hatred, I guess. And so at that time, they started to see those rates rising. Mm -hmm. And so um, I understand that. Mm -hmm. I so, understand that. But I'm saying when I'm going to you see that uh, what's, when you look at some of these uh, African countries, the way that the living conditions, and you even look at some of the look up their political circumstances for coming to this country, the same thing with the Hispanics coming they got to walk and I mean, they're talking about all these gangs and everything else like that. Of course they have stress and there's racism, but there's not racism, there's classism. And they have probably have a lot of that in uh, Latin America. But, but I'm those saying, folks I mean, are still they, homogeneous. Uh, right. In they're terms still in their of, land. They're still in their land. It's when you come here right, right. and experience the, the uniqueness of American racism. You know, if you're in an all black country, you're dealing with other social stress. I, I you know, as you were speaking, I was wondering what are the birth outcomes, of even those children in Gaza, because they're still making babies, which I always find amazing. Right, 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 right. So are they coming out in terms of what, and you're talking about a war, right? Mm -hmm. right. And how that can impact, but it's really unique. There's a, a, a there's a, a doctor, Dr. Joy DeGru, who studies epigenetics. And she, she, her theory is that a lot of what black women are experiencing in terms, black women in America, has everything to do with a uh, genetic re-engineering that happened because of slavery and then because really? of racism. Yeah, and you, you talk about the third world countries, but uh, African-American babies in Milwaukee die more than a third, really? uh, than uh, a baby in a third world country. It we, could be the, I, I know there's racism, but it could be the, uh, uh, poor eating habits. One thing I, I think I spoke to you before, Brenda, as when I was talking about some of our, uh, some of the areas that we, oh yeah, they have something here in Colorado. And I didn't even know that, you know, they have food deserts, mm -hmm. but they also said they tied, they had a, a maternity uh, desert, some parts in Colorado and there, and the some parts they don't have hospitals. So they got to send people from the big, larger cities in Colorado. They got to send them out there to make sure the babies are coming out right. Could be the same thing about the, 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 the maternity, I mean, maternity deserts or uh, people that's not going to the doctor or people that's uh, not going to the doctor when they should be going. Well, I think there's there's a, a lot of things that, that contribute, but we know that even with um, educated black women, um, right, you right, know, right. doctors, lawyers, they still have the same risk as those yeah, that's what they poor were saying. black and women. That, was, that made it so sad. They always thought it was education, but now mm -hmm. they find it this I mean, yeah, I mean, you yourself, I mean, you have a, probably had a master's degree or something. I mean, but uh, somebody could have you and that lady who has this a 10th grade education uh, having a baby being black, a black woman, probably had the same chance of something going wrong with a, a, sure. a higher infant mortality rate. Mm -hmm. And they were just trying to figure it out. But, but also a lot of the black neighborhoods too. I, I've seen it. I remember when I was a, when I was a teenager and I remember some of these black, black girls giving their child, uh, they would, they, they were giving them milk or something, uh, breastfeeding them. They would, I guess they were, uh, 18, 19, 17. They would be given, I see they'd be giving them, uh, things like Kool-Aid mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, is, is that could be part of it too, giving the child Kool-Aid to drink. Well, nutrition in general plays a part in everything. Right. Um, but you know, access to healthy foods affects everything, but I, it's, it's much deeper than just the foods that we eat and, um, 
socioeconomic status. It's, it's, if it were that easy, we would have figured it out already. Um, but it's, it's much deeper than that and multifactorial. So, um, hopefully we'll at some point figure this all out and be able to even the playing field. But, um, right now we still know black women are very Mm -hmm. at high risk for, um, um, their baby infant mortality as well as maternal mortality and morbidity. Let me ask you one question. I'll let you go. Uh, they have a program here where they come out there and they, they had some doctors come to the hospitals, like they have the maternity, you know, they go to the maternity desert, they speak to the women. So they have some kind of program like that in Wisconsin where they have a doctor. Once they find a woman is uh, pregnant, then she comes out there and they, they let them know this is kind of a uh, food you should be eating. And because uh, they said it was costing the state so much money with all these uh, at-risk babies. Mm-hmm. Do they have the same thing in Wisconsin? I mean, having the doctor or nurse or this is the way you should be eating. This is the food you should be eating. This is this is why the baby's making this uh, thing. This is why you're going through what you're going through. Uh, they have something like that in Wisconsin. I mean, I know they have it, they have it here, but they also have it in other states too okay. that you're aware of. I'm not aware of a specific program. Are you, Julia? But we do have, you know, prenatal uh, prenatal care coordinators that are in the community working with young pregnant women. And part of their focus is nutrition. And doulas now, too. Right? Yeah. And doulas, yeah. doulas are real big. But every every insurance company is working with their pregnant moms. Everybody has tried as trying. And, and, and we must realize the number one cause is preterm birth. Uh, that causes our, the number one reason for infant mortality is preterm birth. And then the second one is unsafe sleep. And then the third is uh, different uh, abnormalities. And people would be surprised the, the, the vast majority of uh, infant mortality is not co-sleeping. Right. They think it's that not. it is because that's what they blow up right. all over but the more than TV. 50% mm-hmm. of them are dying in the hospital right. mm-hmm. where you, they never got out. They never mm-hmm. got out. I yes. saw, I was thinking about you guys the other day. Someone had on their uh, license plates, uh, Neo Nick. Oh. Yeah, which was, uh, so I figured, oh. Probably must... an NICU nurse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. And they're special to be able to take care of those uh, critically ill. Yeah. Little babies. But, he, but you know what he's, I think when you factor everything in, and, and again, when you're looking at the deep dive in the numbers, you begin to see that then why are black people why? so high? Mm-hmm. And then how do people who we share a certain ethnicity with mm-hmm. will come in and have a different experience? Mm-hmm. It, it So now it has to be environmental. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, I mean, there are other things, but things he talked about, food deserts. But a lot of that then is driven by then the caste mm-hmm. that then the descendants of enslaved Africans find themselves in America economically. So then you're already poor. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't I don't think we can ignore the racism, the, sy- mm-hmm. the, the systemic racism uh, that's probably contributing to these negative outcomes when it comes to pregnancy and, and birth. Yeah. Yep. And like I said, for the first time we're talking about, we're talking about racism. In, in the past, um, the moms were made to be blamed you know, and um, and that's and that's why I, I, I kind of get a little uptight when people start blaming people. But the the uh, black moms were were made to feel shame. Remember the whole bus of uh, when they were um, putting sofas and stuff on the boulevards oh, and having yeah. those uh, um, uh, things on the bus about if you sleep with your baby. And then they had a bloody knife. Mm-hmm. Uh, that said. was horrible. Right. Yeah. And not dealing with the real issue. That, and mm-hmm. and the, come the when, when the real issue was pre uh, prematurity mm-hmm. instead of uh, um, unsafe sleeping. But but they chose to vilify the mother. I, I think the other piece of it is I don't know if we want to bear the real cost. Mm-hmm. If Correct. if we really believe that that children are foundational for our survival, all children. All children. Then you know we need to put some things into place mm-hmm. uh, to um, to to change that equation because 
Uh, I don't know if you all realize it in America, we're at zero population growth and we're almost at negative population growth, mm. which means now that, um, and, and it looks like it's across the world. China is now dealing with zero population growth and people go, well, they got a billion people in China. You got to look at it, not next year, mm -hmm. but if you continue those trends, that means that you're going to see a decrease in your population. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. if you're saying that's okay, that's okay. But you know, one thing you want to stay at, at least you want to stay, you know, level, mm -hmm. you know, there, there are times after the war, for example, right. We lost a lot of people. We did. And so we have to replenish we the baby boom, the baby boom. Mm -hmm. And so many of us are boomers. Boomer. Mm -hmm. Our boomers and and uh, boomers, baby boomers, boomers, five boomers. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, I think it, it's it's a it's a difficult discussion to have, it and is. and it intersects politics, it intersects intersects religion, it intersects social mores. It's just uh, it's a lot, but we really want to because um, now the baby boomers are at retirement age, and there are not enough. Um, people to take our places. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and some of us just need to get out our places. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm trying. I'm you. bad. We need to just get out. I got out a the, little ways to is go. Is that where my boomer came from? You know, you know, you know I mean, we, oh, I just, uh, and, and again, you know, I, I I am a product of the black church. Mm -hmm. and Lord, have you ever heard the speech? I really want somebody to be able to come in and take my place one day. One day. That one day is a big indicator that it ain't gonna be anytime soon. You know, I mean it's able to, but I think and I think the other piece of it is how important then you talk about the support network is like grandmas. Grandmas are, are really granddads. Uh, they granddads, mm -hmm. oh granddads are so special. Uh I was I was at, at the store and I saw this uh older man with this little uh toddler or the older ch little child and he had his hand and that was a powerful statement you know so many times I, I'm like um hold that baby hand you know a lot of young when you're young and a parent you don't think about a lot of things but when you're older and you're a parent or a grandparent you think different and that's why you need those multi you know, generation levels of mm -hmm. generation around you because, you know, they put that sweater on that baby, you yeah. know. Uh, My goddaughter, it, it, it meant so much to me. I didn't even say anything. I went to pick her up and, um, you know, so because her dad had to work and so I went to pick her up. And as we're leaving the apartment, she grabs my hand. Oh. And that's it. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> oh. But trust, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. children look for us to be their protectors. Yes, they do. And uh, I watch people walk in. I'm going, shouldn't you be between you and, and right. arms way out here with the kids? Right. Why are you letting them run? Right. You know, it, it, it's all those things where this is quite a funeral. Um, all these things that I know bubbles, uh, all these things that that you do. But I think that that was so it was just so cool when when I thought about that, like you know, and when her dad picked her up, mm -hmm. she grabbed his hand. She grabbed his hand. Yeah. Now her mama, she just running, and <laughs> but it, it says something about the importance of men. Men yeah. are we need so to be present. Valuable. We need to be present uh, with our babies. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. They they really um, they really look up to them, um, and we need everybody. We need, we need mom, dad, grandma, granddad. Um, you know, when the young ladies would move, I said I wasn't gonna buy another truck because I got so tired of moving people because <laughs> they didn't have no one yeah, to move right, them. Yeah, right. You know, they just didn't have that um, support, um, and it it shouldn't be. You know, yeah. And rent nowadays. Oh, oh it's ridiculous. My goodness. It's, it's, I don't know how they live. That dude in New York was prophetic when he ran on the platform. Rent too damn high. Mm -hmm. That was his right. own platform. It's, rent it, too it, damn high. He, he did pretty well, mm -hmm. too. But no, you. I mean, the, the cost of that. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm sitting up here doing the mathematics of the cost of a child, I explain these dudes. They ain't being raised on air. They're not. Right. It costs money. And you say, oh, I bought some diapers. I did this. Don't no, even get me started. It doesn't on that. even. 
begin to cover. I've already used the word this month. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, no, okay. don't, don't, <laughs> don't. And and I think that that's a cultural piece that we have to look at. Um, I know that people will look at me and they say, you're going after these men for child support. Yes, because they need to take care of their children. Mm-hmm. And I mean, take care. You, sneakers ain't paying the rent. Right. Right. Sneakers ain't putting food on the table. Mm-hmm. And that may give you a little feel-good moment that you might have walked over there and I bought him a pair of sneakers. But she has to deal with, I'm going to feed them. I'm going to clothe them. Educate them. Educate them. And look, don't be trying to make her the villain now. She wasn't the villain when you was trying to get with her. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, she's spending that money. Well, of course she, she is. is. Right. She's getting she her hair is. done. I'm looking at you. You all fresh. Mm-hmm. I, I used to sit right across from uh, children's or from family court. Mm-hmm. And here these dudes come in pleading poverty. I'm saying, you know, you need to learn a trick that we learned in college called financial aid day. Financial aid day, we went in looking like we just got free from enslavement. <laughs> <laughs> we looking so poor when we walk in here on financial aid day. You know, that, that's right. crazy. I'm all dressed up on financial. No, I'm poor. I'm going to go buy some stuff with this financial game. And I, you know, I, I, and, and the kids suffer. Man, I could care less about her. I could care less about him. Your baby's suffering. Yeah. And then I get phone calls. These young people out here doing this. And these young people out here doing that. And she's the, oh, did, did she make that baby by herself? Mm-hmm. What is that called when you, when you able to do it? A, what is it? Asexual? Uh, no, no. You're, we're able to produce. You don't need an uh, opposite. Oh, like uh, certain animals are right. able to reproduce or insects right. without the mate. Right. Um, I forgot what that's called. Yeah, don't, don't. And then, because folks can be so trifling. Mm-hmm. Then you, uh, Mike and, Tyson's and, dad, I'm going to show up when you become Iron Man. Uh, yep. Right. Yeah. yeah. Almost Other than those, you're not worthy. I, that's just that's terrible. That's crazy, man. I mean, and, and so we have to value everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody. Mm-hmm. When I'm looking at some at some child, this is us. This is our future, mm-hmm. yeah. man. Yeah. You know, I've told Julia before. My nephew, um, he, I, I just when I see him and his family, his on his dad's side together, it just makes me cry sometimes because he's got three generations above him. So he's got his father, his grandfather, and his great-grandfather. They're all alive. They do mail trips together. You know, they go to over Detroit and spend a weekend and go to a football game. Mm-hmm. Or I'll see them at a game together, you know, just poking at each other, laughing. That just warms my heart because that should be the norm, mm-hmm. but it's not. And so I just, I'm so happy that he is blessed to have that kind of male support in his family that they, you know, cause um, some people don't even think about that. Right. But you know, we, we, let's not forget though. Um, we have a history of marriage. Right. We, we come from a rich culture where our people married, they were married. This, this is, this is a, uh, yes, they do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is new. This is new. Um, but I think that, so we, we try to be fair on this piece. Um, marriage as an institution, let's go back even to biblical times. You have to look at what women did not have. Mm-hmm. We live in a different world now here in America. Women are <laughs> almost, you know, I mean, so women in a different situation than, you know, my mom had to go to work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all right. You'll listen to Community Voice. We're up on the last break of the program. We'll be right back. Get ready, Wisconsin. The Black Child Development Institute is expanding its village statewide. Join us for an unforgettable evening of celebration and empowerment at our gala on Saturday, May 4th, 2024 at the Hilton Milwaukee City Center. Tickets are available for $150 per person and sponsorships are available. Adorn yourself in formal African attire as we celebrate this momentous occasion and the growth of our village. For more information and to purchase tickets, call 414-236-5641 or visit bcdi-wisconsin.org. That is 414-236-5641 
or bcdi-wisconsin.org. Don't miss out on this unforgettable event. Together, let's build a brighter future for Wisconsin's children. Hello, I'm Vanessa, co-chair of the Juneteenth Vendors. I am Frank, co-chair of the Juneteenth Volunteers. Juneteenth is fastly approaching and space is always limited. So if you have an interest in being a vendor, you need to sign up today. Juneteenth would not be successful unless we have volunteers. We need volunteers for a multitude of different areas. So companies, corporations, organizations, Divine Nine, even families, please sign up to be volunteers today. So call Northcott Neighborhood House today at 414-372-3770. Vendors and volunteers call today at 414-372-3770. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tamika Vukovic, co-executive director of Wisconsin Voices. Please join Wisconsin Voices every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. We will be focusing on community partnerships, voter education, and long-term collective impact for all Wisconsinites. WNOV 860 and W293CX 106.5 Milwaukee. FM with your host, Keith Paris. Uh, Welcome back to Community Voice. (laughs) (laughs) Been a very animated discussion. You know. Thank you all for this. I think Mm -hmm. this has been a great discussion. We need it in our community. Uh, We need to take care of our children and take care of our pregnant moms and support our dads um, so that our community can be great again. It was funny. I saw this brother and uh, he had one baby here, Mm -hmm. had her hand, had the other baby, had the baby up here. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. That's the picture. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then he pulled out a Newport. (laughs) (laughs) He's walking with the baby right here, right? Right. I'm going like, oh, we were almost there. But but the idea, and and, and there are men Mm -hmm. who are stepping up. Absolutely. Now, as Chris Rock said, don't brag about what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I take care of my kids. You made them. You're supposed to take care of your Mm -hmm. kids. You don't get any badge of honor for doing what you're supposed to do. I mean, you know, and then your kids will honor you. You know, because they go like, you know, my old man, you know, he was there. But it, but that's on us, man. But a lot of us are, I used to hate hearing this in church, generational curse. I used to hate that. That, that seems so much. But there is some sociology going on there mm-hmm. where people, this is what I didn't see. Mm-hmm. I don't aspire to that. And so then I'll just complete the cycle. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, and if the mothers of the... Of the young men that are fathering the children will and the old ones would would teach would teach their sons you know um, like this one young man that I was uh, working with uh, his mom was in jail his father was in jail and and he didn't he hadn't seen the the role modeled you know but he wanted to be a good dad and and his mother was telling him he didn't have to be you know so. You you gotta get even if you didn't see it, you gotta teach your son what he has to do. Right. We gotta teach our children how to be good parents. 
Yeah. Miss Julia Means, Miss Brenda Buchanan. Thank you all for hanging around. As always, good. Yes. Always be good. healthy. Be you. Let me thank you all for being part of the program. Keon, thank you. Yeah. Carvey, thank you. Oh, they got the thumb up. What's my guy's name here? Nate. 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 Yeah. Oh, he right. Nat Turner. Player. Nat yeah. Turner. <laughs> That's why he didn't play football. That's yeah. right. Good run. Yeah. <laughs> Good little <laughs> great tell ride. We'll okay. talk to everybody tomorrow. We're <laughs> going to this place and things. Yes, he told you. I, I, I know this. I know he did. <laughs> Thank you.